After seven seasons in Turin, Paolo Dybala is leaving Juventus. With his contract expiring and available as a free agent, there's a big opportunity here. But on the brink of missing out on the Champions League, are Arsenal still planning a meeting with Dybala's agent? What's the latest on Gabriel Jesus? Will Nicolas Pepe force a summer exit? And what's the big Arsenal team news that we have for the last game of the season on the weekend? Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14. Welcome back to your boys channel. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm still in recovery from the game uh, against Newcastle, but we're here anyways for all of the latest Arsenal news. So if you enjoy the content, make sure to go down there to smash a like, to subscribe if you are new and help your boy as we close in to 90,000 subscribers. First things first, let's start off with Paolo Dybala. Now this is a player that at 28 years of age, the peak of his powers, Babs14, bingo, he's a player that has scored over 100 goals, got over 50 assists in nearly 300 Juventus appearances, Serie A league titles, Champions League finals, and if Arsenal were to get their hands on him, he'd add very vital experience to what is, of course, the youngest team in the Premier League. So the fact that he's available on a free transfer, there's no surprises that all of the big top European clubs are reportedly interested. As according to ESPN's James Olly, Arsenal have made contact with Paolo Dybala's representatives to find out what personal terms the player is seeking. So Sources have told ESPN a member of Dybala's entourage held meetings in London and Manchester before flying to Spain and Italy for similar conversations. As is to be expected, the agent of Dybala is pretty active, from Spain and Italy to Manchester and London. It looks like Dybala's agent has talked to Arsenal, and according to many other reports, Arsenal are very, very interested. The Arsenal want to know what Dybala wants, and that's going to be very important because as it stands, and most likely, you never know, Arsenal right now aren't going to be in the Champions League. So if they can't afford him that Champions League footy, the wages might be massive and for Arsenal, that's a conversation to be had. But one club that he's not going to is Tottenham Hotspur, as AS confirmed that Dybala has ruled out joining Tottenham Hotspur, with even Fabrizio Romano saying that he's never seen Spurs as an option. This kind of just proves that Champions League football, while important for some players, money does awful talk and Spurs aren't notoriously a club that hand out massive wages. Whereas in terms of Arsenal, let go of Aubameyang, Lacazette's leaving, Arsenal have cleared out massive wages and certainly have the finances to attract Dybala and give him a very healthy contract. But for me, I still feel the Champions League is going to be important, especially with the other clubs that have interest. As according to reports in Italy, Dybala has an agreement in principle to join Inter Milan. The two parties have agreed on a four-year contract worth 6 million euros a year. Despite his close connections to Juventus, the likes of Inter Milan, AC Milan, Roma all have strong interest and two of those clubs, they have Champions League footy. But why exactly are Arsenal chasing him in the first place. I think the ability to play as a false man, to play as a secondary striker, to give this young squad the experience of a top player who has experienced a top environment at Juventus. A player that excels in a final third when it comes to pass completion, gets goals, gets assists, is very technically secure in that final third and on his day would offer Arsenal potentially a world-class player. But unfortunately, I have to admit, my gut feeling is that Dybala is going to stay in Italy. But the fact that he is available on a free, this is certainly an opportunity for Arsenal. Would you give the Dybala that massive contract, attract him to the Emirates Stadium and sign him on a free transfer. Talking about forwards, according to Fabrizio Romano, Darwin Nunes is leaving Benfica this summer. Arsenal wanted him in January, but Benfica wanted 55 million euros. Now it could be closer to 70 to 80 million euros. Nunes though wants to play in the Champions League, with Arsenal being more focused on Gabriel Jesus as their priority. Arsenal do like Darwin Nunes and it makes sense why. This guy has been a goal scoring phenomenon and would give Arsenal an outlet to run in behind the powerhouse that caused Liverpool so many issues to Van Dijk and Canate in the Champions League. But as for Rizzo, it makes very clear there, Nunes wants to play in the Champions League. And even according to Loic Tanzi of the RMC Sports, Nunes has rejected Manchester United and Newcastle as he wants to play in the Champions League. Unlike Paulo Dybala, I think Nunes isn't focused on money and again, it's all about the project and that Champions League. I still think Arsenal could technically afford him, but I just don't think he's worth 80 million euros. If Arsenal don't have that Champions League footy, they're going to have to go above and beyond. Given massive wages, making the centerpiece of the project that they can do, but is Darwin Nunes worth 80 million euros? That, my friends, is for you guys to discuss down below in the comments. According to The Athletic, Arsenal are still optimistic of landing major targets such as Gabriel 
Gabriel Jesus, even if they fail to qualify for the Champions League. They feel that the project, the city and the club make for a sufficiently compelling proposition. Gabriel Jesus for me is more of a player that is all focused on that project, to be a centrepiece, to be a first team starter. And that's why I don't think this transfer is fully dependent on the Champions League. And even according to Riesa Simplinko, she claims of course Gabriel Jesus would like to play in the Champions League, but that's not his main focus. What will weigh in his career plan is contract, longevity, financial part and the possibility of playing, assuming responsibilities as a number 9 of the team. Jesus wants to go to a club where he's going to play first team minutes on a consistent basis and he's going to be a guaranteed starter. And Arsenal certainly could offer him that as a centre forward, as a right winger, but as his reporter makes pretty clear, he wants to play as a number 9. There are some concerns of can he be that goal scoring number 9 to take Arsenal to the next level. But on top of that in terms of the price tag, according to ESPN, Arsenal have bulked at Man City's £55 million valuation of Gabriel Jesus, who has just one year left on his current deal. So I can understand why Arsenal have bulked at it, but at the same time, Arsenal have the power in negotiations. Not exactly with the player, but if they give the player the right amount of wages, the player doesn't want to extend his Man City contract, so therefore, City are going to have to sell. So with that being the case, Arsenal have the power in negotiations. If they're smart, with just a bit of decent negotiation, I don't see why Arsenal can't get that price down for £55 million closer to 45 to 40 million pounds. But what do you guys believe is a fair price for Arsenal to pay for Gabriel Jesus? The standard claim that Arsenal will target quality not quantity, with the club ready to significantly back Mikel Arteta again. Arteta has told Edu and chief executive Venai Ventakeshim he wants two top players in every position. There is no secret why Arsenal for me are going to miss out on the Champions League. Yes, you can blame the manager or certain players, the lack of a quality goal scorer, but ultimately if you look at it this way, if I told you guys at the start of the season that Eddie Nketiah, El Nenny, Rob Holding, Cedric Suarez and Nuno Tavares would be key personnel to help Arsenal get over to the Champions League, as great as some of those guys have done in the short term in terms of doing a job. Just look at the names there. These guys unfortunately just aren't the quality to get a team into the Champions League. You look at the top teams in Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool. These guys have massive, massive squads. And unfortunately, if you don't have that massive squad, but you have world-class players like Hugh Minton and Harry Kane, they can also carry a team over the line. Arsenal just don't have a clear world-class player. They had a very good first team. And I still believe that first starting 11 for Arsenal when everyone's fit and available is of a Champions League calibre. But that unfortunately is not the same case for the rest of the Arsenal squad. But right now, Arsenal need experienced players to come in to give us that quality, yes, to improve the starting 11, but to also ensure that we don't have the same issues in the starting 11 when a Thomas Partey or a Kieran Tierney or a Tomiyasu get injured as well. Moving on to the future of Nicolas Pepe. So many Arsenal fans were so, so excited. This guy was meant to be the one. But unfortunately, my friends, despite the glimpses of form, it seems like we might have been clickbaited. According to Chris Wheatley, Nicolas Pepe is reportedly ready to push for a transfer away from Arsenal this summer, with Footy Insider claiming that Arsenal are ready to sell Nicolas Pepe at a huge loss of more than £40 million. The club are now exploring ways for Pepe to get off their wage bill and a loan move could prove more likely, given the player's recent form and wages. It is unfortunate and I did believe in the player once upon a time, but I just don't see it turning around and I think it's time to call it quits. Cash in on Nicolas Pepe, get as much money back as possible and personally I think Nicolas Pepe will go to the Serie A. With the likes of AC Milan and Inter Milan reportedly interested, I could see a cheeky loan with the obligation to buy as those Italian clubs seem to love. And I think Nicolas Pepe would do pretty well and I do think Pepe could do pretty well in the Serie A. On to some team news, according to Sky, Takahiro Tom Yasu, Ben White, Gabriel Magalhaes and Emil Smith-Rowe were all absent from Arsenal training at London Colney. One game left of the season against Everton at the Emirates Stadium and Arsenal are going through an injury crisis. Four players that all started against Newcastle and three out of Arsenal's back four, bearing in mind that Tini is already injured. We are in big, big trouble and it is a further indication that why next year, Arsenal need to have the squad depth of a Saliba, a proper backup right back and a left back as well. But on top of that massive blow, according to Chris Whitley, Thomas Partey is also unavailable for Arsenal's final game of the season against Everton. But unfortunately, no more Ghanaian excellence until the start of next season. That's a blow there. And even though fans have given up in the top four, technically it's not over. Now, in terms of the Arsenal opponents, of course, it is Everton who were fighting for their lives. But after an 85-minute Dominic Calvert-Lewin winner at Goodison Park, 
Despite being 2-0 down, Everton won 3 goals to 2. Officially securing their Premier League safety, Everton are no longer fighting relegation and they've got nothing left to play for. But as the games against Brighton and Southampton have showed, these type of teams can still be dangerous. Yes, we might not get top 4 but it's still possible. If Norwich was somehow to pull off a miracle and to somehow beat Spurs, which I don't see happening, Arsenal still have to maximise their points and hope that Arsenal are there to capitalise and somehow make their way back into the Champions League. Despite me being the ultra optimistic I just don't see it happening but of course anything is possible so what are your own predictions for the final day of the Premier League season and moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with an Arsenal Academy player playing for the Arsenal under 18s and he has thrived he's scored goals and that is Keon Edwards who has just signed his first professional contract at Arsenal, saying, I want to say a massive thank you to all the staff at Arsenal and also my family for being there every step of the journey so far. This guy has electrified the Arsenal under 18s and next year, with Mika Biriff and following Balogun being more involved in the first team, Edwards will be far more involved in the Arsenal under 23s and he's a player that us Arsenal fans should be excited about going into the future. On to some confirmed transfer news, as Stuttgart have announced the Mavropanos move has been made permanent, with the deal being worth 4.5 million euros coming to Arsenal. I am very disappointed about this, only 4.5 million euros for a player that other clubs in the market are already looking at, trying to sign him for a far more expensive try. It's just not the best negotiating from Arsenal on their behalf. William Saliba has received yet another call up for France for the upcoming Nation League fixtures. He is clearly now very much a part of the Champs thinking for a World Cup spot. Now for an Arsenal player that is great to see and Saliba deserves that call up but the concerns are not going to be. To remain in that French national team, he has to be playing first team minutes and I must say he was getting that. Whereas at Arsenal with Ben White and Gabriel, the higher calibre of players, he's not going to get that same guarantee of first team minutes and that could be a very key conversation for Arsenal and Saliba to have when he returns to Arsenal Football Club. And finally, Arsenal have launched the official 2022-23 home jersey. The collar has arrived and it almost looks like the Arsenal 2019-20 kit just with a brand new collar and I know some fans aren't a fan of this collar but personally it's kind of grown on me and it's something that I am a fan of but I can see why some fans don't like it and Arsenal will wear this kit for the first time against Everton in their final league game of the season but in the process of announcing the brand new kit we have also got an announcement of a brand new number for one of Arsenal's star boys as Arsenal confirmed that Gabriel Martinelli will wear the new number 11 shirts following in the footsteps of Torreira, Ozil, Van Persie and Wiltord some big names there in the past for Arsenal and now Martinelli completes the star boys, Saka number 7, Smith row number 10 and Martinelli 11. It does look nice, it's great for the aesthetics but with that key first team number comes the pressure to now deliver. He hasn't quite been at the levels that some fans have expected but he is still only 20 and at that age in the career you have to expect inconsistencies. But what do you guys make of Martinelli receiving the Arsenal number 11 shirt and ultimately do you think it's deserved? But that is the video there and there so hopefully you guys have enjoyed and if you have don't forget to smash a like and to subscribe if you are new follow your boy on all of those social medias if you would like to the links will be down below in the description but that was all of the latest Arsenal news today and yes the focus now is on Everton on Sunday it is massive and gargantuan and we don't know if top four is on the line but all we can do is maximize our points and hope for Norwich City Dean Smith and Timo Pukki to pull off a miracle will it happen they're gonna have to wait and see take care of yourselves and in the bits.